Today in Midtown Manhattan, billionaire investor Warren Buffett has a date with a hedge fund manager, uh, all for charity. Our Betty Lou is with Mr. Buffett before he sits down to his stake. Betty, what have you got? That's right. I am here with a legendary investor, of course, billionaire investor Warren Buffett, just about to sit down uh, to lunch with Zhao Dan Yang, the Chinese hedge fund manager. Um, Warren, just tell me, first of all, I mean, obviously this is your 10th year doing this lunch. Uh, the proceeds go to the Glide Foundation. Uh, what do you hope they do to, with the uh, record-winning bid of $2.1 million? I hope they do just what they've been doing, taking people that have hit bottom from all aspects of life. If they need vocational help, if they need medical help, if they need housing help, if they need food, they help tens of thousands of people uh, and they believe everybody has a future and they believe every life is as important mm. uh, as, as any other life. Now uh, Mr. Zhao paid as I mentioned a record 2.1 million dollars. Um, he's going to be sitting down with you. I know he's got various issues to talk with you about over the next three hours. Um, one of those is that he says he wants to give you some, maybe possibly some introduce you to some investment ideas in China, a company called Walmart even. Uh, are you open to uh, investing more in China? I know you've got the BYD investment. Oh yeah, no. China, I mean there's going to be all kinds of opportunity in China. I, you know, I don't know that much about many specific companies. I know about BYD. We've got some plants over there and that sort of thing. But uh, there's going to be a lot of money made in China. Yeah, indeed. indeed. The BYD investment is certainly something that was uh, talked about a lot during the uh, shareholders meeting. Uh, turning to the economy, because obviously that is uh, also very important to uh, charitable donations, is how the economy is going to go. Um, what kind of recovery do you see? There's a lot of debate about is it going to be a W shape, a V shape, a U shape. I know you hate predicting things, no. <laughs> but, but in, in terms of what your best gauge is at this moment. I really have no idea. What I do know is America will go on to set new records and people, your children will live better than you and your grandchildren will live better than your children. This, this, this country works. I mean, it, it, it has faced all kinds of problems in the past. We had the Great Depression. We had world wars and all of that. And we just keep marching forward over time. But we do have these... The, 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 it gets stalled occasionally, and we're in one of those very serious stalls now. But we'll, we'll come out of it. I don't know when we'll come out of it. Well, there's been a lot of talk about the green shoots in the economy and the banking industry, and I know um, that there's also been a lot of talk about perhaps recovery there. But you were just saying that leverage is one of the most important issues in the banking industry. What is too much leverage now that we have gone through all of this? What is too much leverage to you? Well, the leverage we had and the interconnectedness of that leverage meant that the we had a paralysis in the financial system last September. I mean, we, when you know, there's only there's only really one way that a a smart person can get in trouble, and that's leverage. I mean, you can't go broke. And one of my friends used to say, if you're if you're smart, you don't need it. And if you're dumb, you got no business using it. Uh, you can't go broke if you don't owe money. Right. And and we had these incentives. Uh, build into many institutions to just pile on leverage like you can't imagine. Both thirty to one, for instance. Well, that was that was the observable leverage, but then there was all kinds of things. There were all kinds of things off the balance sheets as well. So the, mm -hmm. we went crazy on leverage in this country, and and uh, we've got to rein it in. And and it isn't a sl it's a slow process deleveraging an over leveraged economy, including the consumer's been over leveraged. Well, how long do you think that process would take? It can take it can take a while. I, I have no idea when it'll. It hasn't turned Years, yet. Perhaps. It hasn't it hasn't turned yet. I it it. it there's no telling how long it'll take. It will happen, though. We'll cure it. Right. But some have said that we're well into the deleveraging process, though. But you kind of sound like you're, you're, you think we're still in the beginning of that process. Well, there's a lot to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's turn to um, part of the banking industry is obviously what the Fed has done. And you've been very supportive of what Ben Bernanke has Absolutely. done. Absolutely. Uh, but in Washington right now, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not Bernanke uh, will be or should be renominated. Uh, what is your view on that? I'll send in a write-in vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I think he's absolutely the right man but, uh, and uh, when you've got somebody that good uh, I think you keep him in the lineup <laughs> so you would support a, re a renomination well, uh, of him? sure I'm qualified uh, you know we were sitting down with President Barack Obama uh, earlier this month and he had talked quite a bit about the jobless market and, and, and about uh, unemployment of course uh, he mentioned that very likely America will see an unemployment rate over 10 percent is that even conservative in your point of view or what do you think well I think it, I, I think he's right and who knows how much higher it goes that, we're going to have more unemployment, and, and we have not, the recovery really hasn't gotten going. I mean, it, it will. I, I want to emphasize that. But, but unemployment lags the recovery anyway. So even if it, the recovery started today, unemployment would go up for a while. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's very, very likely to go above 10%, and there's no telling how much above that it'll go. Oh, and you've been also supportive of President Obama and Absol his policies. Uh, if there was one thing, though, that you would 
want to change in any of the policies that you've heard about, whether or not it has to do with finances or not, or the financial industry or not, what would it be? Well, I, uh, I, I, I'm not big on second-guessing people that are doing, they're very good, very smart, doing their best. They have the interest of the American public at, at the heart. So, I, you know, I am... I am supportive of things, and I know that there are going to be some mistakes made. But if I were in there, there would be plenty of mistakes made. I mean, it is not an easy job that they have, and, mm -hmm. and you've got the right people that are working on it. Well, do you agree that it would be um, prudent for us not to issue a second stimulus package? Well, I, I, I think you may very well have to do it. So, okay. so I, I, I don't know the answer to that now. But I would say this. With, so far... You know, it looks like we're going to need more medicine, not less. <laughs> hmm, indeed. Okay. Warren, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, I really Betty. appreciate it. Have a great lunch, by the way. I will. And it's a million dollars. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll, right. I'll give you my leftovers. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll appreciate it. That's a pricey leftover. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Well, that was. That was uh, Warren Buffett, of course, billionaire investor, heading off to his lunch with Dal Don Young, the Chinese hedge fund manager. And um, I'll bring you leftovers as well. Matt. I would Back appreciate a ribeye steak. Betty, thanks very much for that.